And so all my life I have uh, have an interest in just about everything. I read neuroscience all the time. Yeah, I think if I had a clone, I'd, he'd be a neuroscientist. And so. in the background, the soundtrack you're hearing are all these great artists that your parents are playing at the house. Is uh, You know, as I said, I grew up listening to, you know, everything from Elvis to Coltrane to uh, the Platters. And, you know, that has influenced me. It's enriched me from early on, you know. Now, where do you think you got the creativeness from genetically? Well, my mother is a fine artist, and, I, oh, and yeah. uh, she's fantastic, a fantastic oil painter. Okay. My dad was uh, thinking about being a fine arts major at Harvard. He became a French literature major, but they were both creative in their own ways. His whole personality was creative. My dad, he was unbelievable. Plus, I looked up to him because he, he was a scholar among scholars who spoke nine languages, including Russian and Turkish and Chinese, Japanese, you know, German, French, Latin. And a real political scientist. Do you want to oh, do you want to disclose he, what he did? He uh, was legal attaché for uh, General MacArthur and went to Japan uh, right after the war and helped set up the new government. And about twenty scholars conceived of the the new constitution. But my father actually formed the language of the constitution wow. with two other two others. Yeah, he he's a smart guy. Um, and I always, you know, emulated him. He had a, such a command of the language, it was crazy. I'll give you an idea. When I was 14, I, I remember asking him, Dad, what's the difference between ignore and avoid? And he goes, the level of consciousness. I mean, it took one second wow, he just to say that. And I went, I get it. So that that's just an, the tip of the iceberg. He, he was full of things like that. He could do three crossword puzzles. L.A. Times, San Diego Union, and New York Times, while he was eating Rice Krispies and having a conversations with me, in between he would write the words, and by the time I was done with my scrambled eggs, he was done with three crossword puzzles. That's how smart he was. Wow. Now, how many people do you do? I don't know anybody who could do that. And so he, he was uh, extraordinary. I think um, he must have been a genius level. Two things I want to cover. The... the dr- the incredible way the music industry has changed. Do you mm-hmm. want to talk a little bit about that? Mm. Well, certainly, uh, digital technology has changed everything. It is uh, streaming and caused, uh, you know, I mean, I don't think there was a platinum album this last year. I think that for the first year, a uh, first time, um, no one got platinum status. Wow, because no one's buying them. They're no just streaming them. There aren't any stores to buy them at. I mean, you have to go to Amoeba to buy a, a, an LP or... A, Maybe a CD, you know, it just it, they seem like artifacts now because everyone's either file sharing or downloading their Spotify, you know, iTunes, and a lot of people just rip it right off of YouTube. So, what, you know, not much business left there. How easy was it for you to, to evolve with technology as, hmm. as an artist? Well, I'm not crazy about digital technology. I have a dim view of it from an ideological standpoint. I think it's causing... Um, all these social networks and things like that, I think uh, it's supposed to make people, bring people together. And it, on one level it does, but it also, there's another side to it. And that's like, you can't have 1,400 friends. And so you become alienated. There's a there's a aspect of social networking that is isolating. The dark side, I would say. Yeah, you know, kids don't come out and play on the grass. They're playing games on the internet which is in social networking. Well, you can network with games, but you know, you know what I mean. I think um, digital te- there's something about digital technology that I, I have a dim view about, yet I know that it's a tool that I have to use to do my composing. There's nothing, I, nothing else that, that I can use. I can't go buy an old tape player. It's just I would be so out of it. I wouldn't be part of the game. So I, there's a part of me that feels a certain reluctance about using digital audio but it's something i have to do well, it's a, it's a ne- uh, you know kind of a necessary evil if I, if i it's maybe going a little far to say that but so i do use pro tools and i have you know five or six computers and use them all the time i was just at your studio last week and i think you're waiting for your pro tools upgrade right right well i just had it upgraded yeah to so, uh, uh, the, the latest hd and i'm using it i had the extreme privilege of having Frank play guitar on a, an upcoming recording and I don't take that lightly I I never have met uh, a, a musician's musician a real master of music or maestro I guess 
in music when uh, the producer arranged it and I heard the track. You know, I can't even believe I can't believe I'm a part of that. I mean, that's how amazing it is, and you just did some incredible stuff to make me sound really good. Well, thank you, thank you. When I record, I I, I see people coming out of courses in guitar or you know music school, and they've been beaten with this obligation to learn all the notes and play all the scales, and so they get lost in the notes, so to speak. My whole purpose in music is to put fire in those notes you know put expression in those notes you know put emotion and heart and soul into it and so when I when I record I'm not fooling around I'm not just trying to fulfill some kind of formal you know obligation you know when it's, I... it's about art and creative being creative and being expressive and being uh, dramatic or sad you know whatever whatever the the song calls for you know, I want to align myself with it and resonate with it and do my best to enhance it.